On September 30, 2001, a 13-year-old boy noticed that a torso had washed up near the shores of Galveston Bay. Police officers found garbage bags filled with body remains nearby. They later discovered on October 5th that those remains belonged to a man named Morris Black. He lived in this apartment number one behind us. In apartment number two, police found out lived an elderly, ugly, mute death woman. As they investigated further, they realized that all signs pointed to that woman being guilty of the killing of Morris Black. Then later they found out that woman wasn't a woman at all. It was actually one of the richest men in all of the United States living in this $300 a month apartment. Why? What was going on? It's a crazy case. We can't wait to go through it all with you and we cordially invite you to come along. Come along. Sometime in November of 2000, a man by the name of Klaus Dillman owned this building. At that time, he met with a potential new tenant who he described as a little old lady by the name of Dorothy Siner. He said she couldn't hear or talk, so they communicated by writing back and forth on a pad of paper. She wrote him saying she would travel a lot and her brother-in-law would be stopping by sometimes to check on the apartment. He agreed to rent her the apartment for $300 a month. A couple of months later, a man by the name of Morris Black rented the apartment right across from Siner. Family members described him as a grumpy, paranoid loner who didn't seem to have any friends. He had lived in many different states throughout his life, always in poor areas of town. At one point while living in South Carolina, he threatened to blow up the electric company over what he said was a $16 overcharge to his account. He was almost thrown out of this apartment because he got so angry over what he felt like was a $19 overcharge on his electric account. According to testimony at trial, Black became close friends with Siner and eventually he figured out Dorothy Siner was actually Robert Durst, whose family owned the Durst organization, which was worth billions of dollars. All we know about the friendship of Durst and Black is from Durst, because Black is no longer around to talk about it. On September 30th, 2001, his body parts were found in multiple black bags. We're now at Galveston Bay. This is where a 13 year old came fishing with his father when he noticed a torso. When police arrived and found the other bags filled with body parts, they noticed that one of the bags had been cut. The assumption here was that Robert Durst dropped the bags off, came back to check on them early the next morning and saw that they were floating on the water. So he figured this is not gonna work. He thought they were gonna sink or go out to sea. So he had to grab the bag that had the head because that had the evidence of the bullet in it. He grabbed it, cut it open, took the head out, the head never been found. As detectives went through the bags, they found a newspaper clipping with the address 2213 Avenue K on it. When police arrived here at 2213 Avenue K, they noticed blood trails all over the place. One in particular they noticed was coming out the door, down the porch, down these stairs, and heading out here toward the road. When they made their way inside, they found more blood trails, including one heading into apartment number two. After police walked into apartment number two, it did not take long for them to discover that there was a drop cloth that had been laid down onto the kitchen floor. They lifted up the drop cloth and noticed that there were cuts in it. They decided to take out a good chunk of the linoleum. They found a blood stain, they sent it in, and then they discovered that it belonged to Morris Black. At that point, all police knew was a little old deaf mute lady who traveled a lot lived in the apartment where the blood was found. However, when they searched the trash behind the apartment, they found a piece of paper with an eyeglass appointment for pickup on it in the name of Robert Durst. The name didn't ring a bell to investigators. They also found a receipt for Chalmers Hardware with the date of September 28th on it. That was the day of the murder. After Black died, Durst came here to Chalmers Hardware. Inside he bought a bow saw, drop cloth, and a knife. Police say he used the items to dismember Black's body and clean up after. Police arrested Durst after he went to pick up his glasses at the eye clinic. His bond was set for $250,000. A detective said to him, why do you have that? When he asked him how he could get out, and he said, well, not on me. And sure enough, from jail, he calls a woman in New York by the name of Deborah, and the next morning, $250,000 was sent so that he could bond out. That's when police knew there was something even more crazy about this story than what they'd already found out. It didn't take long for police to find out Durst had already been a suspect in two other murders. One was his first wife, a woman by the name of Kathleen Durst. 
She disappeared in late January of 1982. He waited several days to report her missing, and she has never been found. The other was Durst's best friend, Susan Berman, who was the daughter of gangster David Berman, who ran the Flamingo Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas in the 1940s. The day after Durst's first wife, Kathy, went missing, a female had called the dean of the medical school she was attending, saying she was Kathy. Police later assumed Berman was the person who made that call. Her body was found in her home in Los Angeles on Christmas Eve of 2000 after being shot in the back of the head. Police later received an envelope postmarked December 23rd with just Beverly Hills Police written on it. The word Beverly was spelled wrong. Inside was written Berman's address along with the word cadaver, which means corpse. Later, another letter was found, written by Durst to Berman, where he had spelled Beverly wrong, and although Durst at one point said he wasn't even in Los Angeles the day Berman was killed, and also in his opinion, whoever wrote the cadaver note was indeed the killer of Berman, he eventually had to admit he was the one who wrote it, and he was the one who found her body. As police continued to investigate, Durst jumped bail and ended up being arrested at a store in Pennsylvania after he tried to steal a chicken salad sandwich and a couple of other things. Even though he had $500 cash in his pocket as well as $37,000 cash in his car. At trial for the murder of Black, Durst said, I did not kill my best friend. I did dismember him. He said Black had a key to his apartment and when he arrived home on September 28th, Black was sitting in his apartment. Holding the gun, Durst kept hidden in the apartment. Durst said they got into a struggle over the gun and Black was accidentally shot. Then he panicked and went to the hardware store. Jurors believed him and he was found innocent of murder. He did have to serve three years in prison for the dismemberment of Black's body. Shortly after Durst was released from prison for dismembering Black's body, he bought a condo in this high-rise building right here. He actually over time, ended up purchasing three of them, Unit 606, 801, and 1405. Not far from this building is a CVS pharmacy. In July of 2014, Durst picked up a prescription, then went to the front counter and urinated all over the candy, with Skittles apparently being the candy of choice. His attorneys called it a medical mishap. Others thought a more likely explanation was he wanted to drum up media attention before the release of his HBO special, The Jinx. The next year on the Jinx, Durst went to the bathroom after sitting for an interview. His microphone was still on and he was heard saying he killed them all, of course. The day before the final episode aired, police found him hiding out in a New Orleans hotel. We're at the JW Marriott in New Orleans, which is where Robert Durst was apprehended. He was using the false identification of Everett Ward when he checked into the hotel. As police took a look at his fake ID, Durst said about the ID, that's pretty good. In room 2303, police also found more than $42,000 in cash stuffed into envelopes, a loaded 38 caliber handgun, five ounces of marijuana, his passport, and a UPS tracking number. The FBI were able to locate the UPS package, which had more than $100,000 of cash inside of it. He was arrested for the murder of his best friend, Susan Berman. She was the same woman who police say helped him avoid arrest for the murder of his first wife. Robert Durst is about to go to trial for the killing of his best friend, Susan Berman. That trial was delayed because of COVID back at last year. And this year, 2021, they're gonna try him again. They'll be starting up soon. Y'all be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can come along with us on future adventures. Come along.